All right, so where did this cat come from? Hi. Might I help you? Can I have your name? Do you have one? Okay, is no one going to comment on this giant bat creature that you all saw? Anybody? I'm more curious about the cat. I mean, I'm curious about the cat too, but... Yes, feed me. Give me a drink. Something. You left your defensive engineer out there here without someone else to protect her? Are you nuts? Yeah, that place is creepy as fuck. Okay, you know what? You can have that thing. Go ahead. See how you fare against a deadly void scent. Uh, dumbasses, we can just build another. Uh, you have a gun! Shoot them! Dude, you're a tiny little Lullafell. All you have to do is get between their legs and deliver a nice swift punch to the underside of their gonads. Why does no one ever think to do this? Well, who the fuck cares if she dies on that ship? Apparently we don't like her. You crafty little bastard. She would have to actually survive to get to it first. Like, she doesn't have an adventurer for hire to go in there and... Whatever. I mean, I know we killed a bunch of things in there, but who's to say there isn't more? Yeah, like, who the hell is this cat? So yeah, now, here is where we actually learn it's why it's that it's actually called the void arc thank you game for actually spoiling it to the player beforehand but whatever yeah we're not gonna pronounce your proper name because it's gaelic or some crap and i'm not gonna i'm gonna screw it up so we're just gonna call you kit kat for kitty cat okay all right cool I'm not breaking any of your rules by doing so so i don't want to hear it I wonder if anybody has ever named her their cat Kit Kat. Because, you know, there are people who call their, like, cat, like, Kitty or Oreo or other common names like that. Do you have to walk all over the furniture? I mean, I guess you're small, but you don't see the Lollifel doing the same thing. City of Mock, huh? So, you must be... pretty old. Yeah, we've learned a little bit about them and before. Like the Nimians, some of the Nimians got cursed, turned into Tonberries. We've uh, broken into what was left of Andipore, faced that bat creature Diablos before. Yeah. Your master, huh? So you familiar then? Yes, that is from where Mock hails. So yeah, um, 
Kit Kat over here is at least probably 15, 1600 year old dish is somewhere along those lines. I don't know exact numbers. Nor do we know how long he's been in existence before the downfall of Mach and the, uh, the Six on Brook Calamity, so. So we'll just say 1600. How about that? Works for me. Well, frankly, there wasn't really a lot of actual void sent on there. Like, there were some regular creatures at the start and everything, and... Oh, great. So, it's slaving the void sent, and what? Let me guess, they, 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 they came back and decided they weren't going to have any of your shit and rebelled. Kind of like how the, uh, whatever, uh, whatever they were called. The, the, um, the giant guys in, uh, in Copperville Mines? Those things. I, I can't remember their proper name right now. Unless they were just called the giants. I don't know. I honestly don't remember. It was a long-ass time ago. So yeah, they broke free and decided they weren't having your shit. Okay, understood. Ah, so she does have a name. Well, that's kind of sucky. So, okay, that explains all the coffins. That's where the void center is supposed to be being kept, or were supposed to be. And they just left you all alone to watch it? That's kind of sad. Yeah, why, why has it taken this long to, to be a problem, so to speak? Yeah, yeah sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a little bit to blame for this. Like, for not actually killing him in my encounter. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, he is pretty much tie up there on the void scent chain, but with slaying primals is my day job, you would think that would be easy chump change, but apparently not. Uh, did you not pay attention? The interdimensional rift in the sky sort of thing? A void gate? Okay, so it does have a proper name. But yeah, the. the, the some more dimensional collapse portal was mentioned in there, okay? Pay attention. Keep up with the pace here. So, so you could just make a joke about be being sucked into the void, except that's pretty much what actually just happened. You and the treasure! Well, at least he's actually happy. It's not all Ollie on shit again. Oh, well, excuse me. I risked my hide for the sake of the realm. Hi! Hi, adventurer, warrior of light. Kind of what I do for a living. Hi, over here. Over here. Kit Kat, hi. Flailing my arms uselessly. He doesn't... I, I'm not part of his crew. I, I, I'm just here helping him. Uh, no, you said you'd help. I, my, my agreement should be separate from all this. I, d I did your dirty deed for you. I went on the ghost ship and got you some, some, some treasure. Okay, maybe not as much as you wanted. But yeah, yeah. My, my services here are done.
Excuse me. When, when did I agree to this? I mean, you know it was going to anyway, but yeah, thanks for asking for my opinion. Jerk. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah! Not only do you not know what's still left on there, but do you even have the slightest faintest idea of how that thing works? Can you be sure you're not gonna like overload it and like blow yourself up in the process? Ha, ha, ha. I get it, Koji. You and your puns. So, what's next, Stacia? I'm here. I'm ready. I jumped ahead in time a little bit, so you have more information for me. Yada, yada, yada. But I never left. Well, yeah, time actually did pass in between this, but shh. Well, of course I remember him. He kind of saved our lives. Oh, how about we we make a we make we get a map and we start putting pins on all the sightings, see if we can't spare a pattern or or, or something. Yeah, I know my way. Wee. Sorry. But yeah, we actually need to click on the standard. Uh, she's referring to obviously flying as in lampshading, you know, directions to where their fortress is in the sky. I'm just being overly silly. Hello, Mr. or Mrs. Engineer. Okay, you are a mister. A pretty interesting little uh, duck slash hideout you got up here. Okay. Guess I'm trusted enough not to need a direct escort anymore. Well, I would hope that would be the case, but I can't even open a damn door to Fort Holmes Manor. So there's that. Yeah, it might be a good idea for you to put railings on this place because how do you know like a strong gust of wind is not just gonna knock you flat off this thing and tumbling down thousands of feet to your deaths. Although to be fair, you probably would pass out from the cold and from the shock of it long before you hit the bottom. So it would probably be a little bit merciful from your perspective, not so much for the person who finds you. And I think I'm a little tall to fit in this door. I don't know. I'm just making crap up. That's what I do. Oh, I know what it's like to deal with Why is your hitbox so huge? I know how to deal with bickering children. Do you even sleep in here? Well, this is your quarters, I guess, but... Damn, sons. What if someone else needs to look at the map or whatever while you're sleeping? You could be fapping here, for crying out loud. I mean, there's probably some rule against don't bust into my chambers when, I, when you're not invited, but whatever. Hi. You know what? Shut up. I'm here to help you. Dude, it's your chambers. Kick the cat out. You're allowed to do that, you know. I mean, I know you don't want to piss Kit Cat off to the point where he's not going to help you anymore, but 
he, he's pretty much going on this mission. He's got no other else to go and no other person to besiege. So yeah, he's gonna stick around. Uh, she didn't steal your bloody compass. You bargained for it. That's a little bit different. Uh, that's a little bit too much. And by the way, the Archbishop has been dead for quite a while. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm an adventurer. I might have friends. Uh, you're only in it for the nobility or cause. Well, that and me. Uh, the, the pirate guys, they made it a little bit clear last time they're only in this for the adventure and the treasure and they don't give a shit about the state of the realm. Let's handle it ourselves. We'll be fine. Shut up. Don't be a smug bastard. We're not going to get anywhere if we're arguing amongst ourselves the whole time. Yeah, how about I punch you in the face in the capitulance? This is what you could have done from the start. You know, you are allowed to separate yourselves from each other. Again, how about the point of, well, apparently you guys have seen him floating around. Get a map, start sticking pins in, see if you can't find a pattern. Yeah, it may amount to nothing, but it's a better start than anything. Actually, do have made themselves uh, quite the home down there. I mean, they even do their own laundry up here and everything. What are, what are these things? These things are washing machines, maybe? I don't know. I never really thought about that before. Oh, they even have a cook, and my cat is now crawling all over me. Yeah, they've, they've built, uh, built themselves uh, quite the little homey place here. As a view. Um. Binoculars? Invest in some. Thanks. You guys have a stove and a freaking laundry machine up here. Get a pair of binoculars. You guys are so silly. And you can't even tell me, oh, maybe such a thing doesn't even exist in this world. You know, fantasy realm. Dude, the Charlians have goggles that they can literally see Aether with. I'm pretty sure... And, and, and you end it, then you have characters who wear glasses. I'm pretty sure the concept of binoculars is not that far beyond them. At all. Okay, Kit Kat. Do you have any ideas? Um... How are you going to steer this thing? Do you even have thumbs? I mean, maybe you do because you're familiar, but... 
Um, okay. Cat piling an airship. I never thought I'd see the day. Yeah, see, you don't have thumbs. How are you going to pilot this thing? I mean, I'm sh you probably have a very prehensile tail. Don't cry. Uh, Utata, uh, he's not a plushie. Okay, Utana, you, you just can't go around just glomping people and familiars. You know, I could have just summoned my chocobo. He's pretty warm and fuzzy. I mean, he's more feathery than furry, but... See? See? Make another compass. See? That's what I suggested a while ago. Cause y'all are dumb. Remember, specific Aetheric signature. Are you sure that signature was the actual Void Arc? I mean, you have a familiar here who has a very distinct etheric signature. I mean, granted, it's not pointing to him. But maybe, maybe it could have referred to Diabolus himself. Maybe it could have been referring to Queen's Gothic. Maybe it could have been pretty much anything. I mean, it was probably one of those three things, considering it's not pointing in a completely different direction than where the Void Arc is currently. And those are the only three things that are different and no longer present along the Void Arc. Duh! Thank you, Kit Kat. Probably because it's not pointing at Kit Kat over here. Well, pursuing it is one thing, actually, handling the problem is another. But I guess it's one of those things, you gotta take your victories where you got them and just make stuff up as you go along. No, oh, she got interrupted, you know that cannot bode well. Uh oh. But didn't we hear them coming? If Radley was with him, I mean, we shoved the Link Pearl in the compass, remember? So, you gonna let Kit Kat pilot this thing? I suggest you not. Woohoo, automatically teleported up here. I will totally take it. What do you mean you made thank the gods? What? Huh. Yeah. So, I mean, you would, again, Link Pearl in the compass. Bradley probably wouldn't let the damn thing out of her sight. We would have definitely known she was coming or heard her or something. So, did they try to stumble upon the Void Arc and run into some Void Set and now are in deep shit? 
That would be very hilarious. And very karmic. They didn't steal it, you bargained for it! <laughs> we'll leave her there then. See what you get for fucking with us. Well, probably not, because I don't know if she can actually tell that you're listening to her. Because if she's figured out that you've snuck a Link Pearl in there, she would probably have it thrown away or destroyed. I mean, this could be an elaborate scheme, but... Considering what we just learned, and it's probably Diablos in the Shadow Queen, where they have run into, uh, they probably are in deep shit. Jay, I wonder if we should tell him about the information we just found out and that, oh wait, their Aether Compass pointed to a place that was not the Void Arc? Our Aether Compass points to a place where that's not the Void Arc. Jay, I wonder if it's the same fucking place. You guys are dumb. All we have to do is follow the compass and it'll take us right to them. His name is Kit Kat. Say it right. Kick him in the ankle for that. You gonna be okay, dudes? Huh, oh, so they don't even know. I know who it's named after, but we don't know that yet. We will find out, though. I promise. I don't really like how they make us do this constant walking back and forth. I mean, it is kind of a little bit nice to see, you know, like where they live and, you know, a little bit of world building here, but it's just so annoying. We have to walk back and forth all the damn time. Like, yes, we know we they live up here. Okay, we got a good look at it. Done. I don't need to see it 10,000 times. Yeah, Void Center bastards to everybody. Well, pretty much everybody. Well, you probably only found out about that recently, and why is your hitbox so huge? I mean, you have been avoid the Vordok for like 1600 years, and my foot is falling asleep because my cat is on me. Okay. I guess that makes sense. So make friends with the, the Void Mages temporarily and in exchange you get ripped into this dimension. Okay. Yeah, that's what I just said, Stacia. Pay attention.
So the null stone is more of a fail safe. Okay. But it's more like a murder weapon. All right. Well, they would have to be. I mean, if someone is trying to kill you and you end up killing them in self-defense, well, you're not really the criminal because you're not the one who tried to commit the first crime. Yeah, so can we be even sure the Null Zone is still there? Okay, well I guess that answers that. How utterly convenient that you were aware of this. Well, it could also be, well, they don't have anything better to do, so they can just, you know, slip in there and just hope and just keep battering away at it until they can get it to break. Or terrorize people into doing it for them. Do we have to rescue her, though? Do we have to? I mean, we could use it to our advantage and be like, hey, bitch, I saved your life. What are you going to give me for it? Remember, that's, that's right, remember kids, make sure you pack extra underwear. Where are we going? Maybe, again, pants crappingly terrifying. All in a day's work for the Warrior of Light. Good plan, good plan. I've had worse. I've totally had worse. I'll be fine. Totally fine. So here we are, folks. In the Weeping City. The floodwaters of Eld have long since receded, leaving a bit of a swampy or marsh area. Well, they call it a swamp. Uh, I, I'm not very versed in those kinds of things, so I'm not sure if this qualifies as a swamp or not, or if it's just honestly just the closest thing to one that we might as well. So one thing I really love here is Kit Kat does randomly appear well not random because it is it is predetermined in various spots with little itty bitty lines of dialogue usually different from what's actually on the screen and then before promptly disappearing i like that it's a, it's a very nice touch and it's one of the reasons why i was so disappointed granted it was hindsight uh by something like some all which I, I kind of did a lot of ranting about how, despite the fact that we had three companions with us during that, not a single- Oh, God, this packet loss. Not a single one of them was to be found in any cutscene or any sort of capacity, not even in a dialogue box, just randomly throughout the entire dungeon. And places like this prove that it was not any kind of programming issue or technical limitation.
So these are some pretty damn big alligators, but we're, we're, we're making short work of them. Very short work. Oh dear lord, I hope this isn't that terrible. This is actually my second run through of this place. I mostly had to scrap the first recording. Mainly because not only was the group itself terrible, I was getting terrible lag and packet loss, so I looked ended up looking like an incompetent fool. And it was way over an hour long. Like it, it was ridiculous, and I started getting just getting very legitimately angry by the end, and it, it just did not bode well. So I apologize for a little bit of the jitteriness that is actually not underneath under underneath English is hard, guys. Under my control right now. Uh, it's an issue with packet loss between me and the actual data center, which is all the way across the country. Hi, Kit Kat. And being on a PlayStation 4, I don't have the opportunity to use a VPN to get a better route to try to get beyond a little bit of those problems. So, apologies. So over here, we can see where some of the, uh, the talons have crash landed. But no sign of any of them right now. But given this presence of a giant spider lady, um, I'm, I'm not really too keen on their ability to have survived until now. We know Radley I had survived until at least recently and was probably in hiding somewhere commenting on the void scent. So at least she and possibly some others we don't know uh, at least initially sur uh, init survived the initial impact with whatever knocked them out of the sky. But how long they can survive in here is anybody's guess. So once again, we have this little icky mechanic. Although it kind of makes more sense here because this is this is a spider creature, and it is a material that is looks akin to kind of spider silk, I guess. So this was among this boss was among the many wipes I had in, in the first one here. That one thing I find very interesting is not only the change of field, uh, uh, even though we're just actually just above it, is that even though she is in a bit of a shell, that she she is still uh, um, vulnerable is the word I'm looking for. And it would help if the tanks had actually tanked stuff. Now the goal here is once you kill a spider, a bunch of people can go down below. And what they will do is, I don't know if I can see anything. I don't know if you can see the dialogue for that key knot right there. There's three of them down there. And by beating the crap out of them, we will make the web unstable and we will fall. Now one big problem. Oh God, this is gonna end badly. Is, is it if this deep earth aether gets inside she will automatically get six 16 stacks uh, Does she have any right now? She has two. Okay every time one of these orb goes in and reaches her and I missed that one She will gain a stack and it basically buffs her implosion here And yeah, if she gets the auto 16 stacks, you're, you're pretty much fucked And that's what kind of happened last time so your goal in here if I didn't have the spider on me and that thing to attack is to basically go around and start detonating these things before they get to her. And thankfully we suffer no harm when we fall down below. Apparently the ground below. Well, it's probably made of moss, I guess. I mean, this is a, a very kind of a swampy mire place, sort of. It would be kind of squishy and would help to cushion our fall, I suppose. Kind of just pulling that out of my butt there, but why the hell not? One of those seems as good as the idea as any.
this is the only other remaining mechanic in this fight. She's gonna go underground and suck us all in and we actually have to stand in the ugly goo and take minor damage in order to avoid it. Because these spider webs are sticky and we're stuck to it and she can't suck us in to surprise us. And surprisingly, I think pretty much everyone survived that. Usually some schmuck either puts one of the webs in the middle or, and or a bunch of people stand in it there and end up getting killed from taking too much damage because it's proximity based and the rest of the fight is literally just lather and repeat. Except now we have a scorpion. That's the only difference. Well, I don't think you're going to be warning anybody considering you're you're a bit dead right now. Hi, K Cat. I just like saying that. So now the river is raging, but that's okay. That's all right. Let's just jump right into these rapids. Who knows where the hell they'll take us? Well, you were very brave to jump in there. Oh, you're not actually disappearing on me, huh? Usually once he said his piece, he pretty much just turns around and just disappears and shows up in the next spot, so I'm not surprised at that. He's even got blinking animations there and everything. That is very adorable. Never noticed that because I've never seen him hang around long enough for me to actually notice that. Ghost! Cor a corpse, like, okay. N now I'm a little bit creeped out here. Uh, did, you, did you guys all get caught up in the flood and die? Tanks, please. Tanks, tanks, please. Like, I, I have them shoved right in your face. Thank you. Now this tower right here, boom! And we have a pyramid structure up right behind it. And this is something I really didn't ever notice or take uh, really anything for until I was flat out told about this. This pyramid structure uh, with the strange orb hanging out up there. Now, it's very easy to miss, because obviously you have to pan the camera all the way up there in order to see it. But it's definitely something worth noting. And I actually appreciate the detail there. Very much so. Ooh, convenient hole! So, one thing it should be worth noting at least in, in my opinion, is this theme every single time. It always reminds me of the Great Palace theme from Zelda 2, at least some of the chords of it. So when like I hear that, I end up singing that song inside my head. And and it it just it drives me insane every time. I mean I mean it's a good kind of insane. But I just think about like Zelda 2 every freaking time. Hi, hi, did, did Spider Lady actually get a chance to warn you? Or maybe not, because she's kind of dead. But but you are a void sign. Who, who are we to say, say how you communicate with one another? Oh, he's just sitting patiently on his ball there. Tanks, tanks, that's not how we count. So, yeah, this is what happened to the Talons. They've been zombified. 
And dare I say, I don't think they quite deserve this. Like, this is a fate worse than death here. That's terrible. They should have probably thought twice about coming into a place such as this, even if they thought, I mean, initially they thought the compass led to the quote-unquote ghost ship, but remember that when that first became a thing, nobody but us ever actually came back from it, so it was already a place of exceeding danger. And even after realizing, oh, it points in a different direction, oh, there must be treasure there, you would think they would have some kind of sense of self-preservation. I mean, I, I guess they are sky pirates, you know, too, and maybe they live for adventure as well, and that the risk is worth the reward. But at the same time, like, how dumb are you? Hey guys, get in the bubble. It's not even my bubble, but kind of getting it. Oh, these poor bastards. Just gonna keep dying and be re-resurrected and dying and re-resurrected. And they don't even want to eat our brains. Come on. This is horrible. This is terrible. Like, they're just begging to end it. But you but you're already dead. Well, I guess that was the end of that. So this is not going to bode well, considering the placement of these things is very odd. Okay, thank you. You move that guy. Alright, cool. Awesome. Now, the succubus can terrorize you, which is kind of shitty. This Dahak does indeed have the tail swipes, which are huge, and also kind of shitty. And this other guy has Mortal Ray, which I just got hit with despite being turned around, which is also kind of shitty. Are we seeing a pattern here? Granted, these things are not that hard to actually deal with, but you do need to understand how to deal with each one in order to effectively do so. Again, not very difficult, but uh, perhaps we shouldn't have been tanking both of those. Or standing in stuff. Seal this thing. Hopefully, people live. Okay, not as much as I wanted, but we shall be a okay. Now, this is one part of the fight I actually find interesting, and a lot of people fail at it, but I do understand why. I'm waiting on a size on purpose here. That you actually need to stand in this, but you only need to stand in one. You actually want this debuff. Because Megadeth will outright kill you if you are not a zombie. And I am purposely waiting to raise anybody. Partially because of MP issues. I'm confusing one attack for another. I do that every single time. Stand in the AoE crap, guys. Pretty please. Thank you. Guys. Okay, yeah, you're all waiting because I don't have MP. 
All right, now do the move I want you to do. This right here. All right, ready? Hellwind knocks you down to critical HP, including the tank, and it will fuck you over and stick him on everybody and let the main tank die, which probably just happened, and it did if you are not very careful. Tanks, it is very wise to actually pop your immunity at that point. I know that's a bit of an extreme measure, but... Okay, then, several wipes later. Finally got that down. Because mechanics are apparently extremely difficult and nobody knows what the hell they're doing. Kick has probably face palming me like, Ugh. Indeed it has. Well, Oligon Architecture has, uh, is, is still kind of floating around a bit too as well. And that's even older! So now we have a headstone, even though most of the crew is not in the room, so we're, we're just going to lock everybody out. Oh, lovely. So an accidental pull later. We have a giant headstone. Oh great, now we get the to troll people who are trying to vote abandon. This place is not hard. I don't know why everyone has so much difficulty with this place. The mechanics are so simple. Some of them can be a little weird to figure out the first time, but once you figure it out, boom. It's not like it ever throws you for a loop or decides to change things up entirely on you. So our gimmick here... is eventually these sides will be sealed off. Now, I do like this fight, even though it is a trash pull, in regards to splitting the alliance up, because in this case, it is only temporary. Like, you had things in, in Crystal Tower and... to a smaller extent, Circus Tower, well, back when it was new, not Carp Stop ability as it is now, where you would have alliances separated at various points and that will actually even happen here in the next fight but here it's it's just little itty bitty so we need to hit these buttons hit the big red buttons guys so we can get the the vulnerability down Around this circle in the center. Uh, why this circle is here, I don't know. Mechanics demand it. Th that's the only answer I have for it. Because it's always here. It just doesn't always offer protection. So, I got nothing. Uh, thank you for getting us cleaved. Very much appreciate that. No, it's leather and it's repeat. Usually you don't have to worry about getting locked behind the wall a second time because you're usually dead or close enough to dead that you can safely ignore it. Because the walls actually don't disappear once they appear until you take care of the Parthenopes. And... If you manage to not get anybody in there, theoretically, although I've never seen it happen, seal everybody out, well, you're not going to hit the button to activate the shield.
So now we are at the top of the pyramid. Where we can now get a closer look. That strange orb at the top. And yeah, it's Ozma. Okay. And there is no H in that word. Stop. It's not funny. It was funny for about 30 seconds when this fight first came out. It is not anymore. So yes, you can fall off this place. PS4 keyboard, please. Thankfully I know how to get rid of it now, but... Needs it to communicate with my party because actually typing and moving cursor over keys on a PS4 does not bone well at all. Okay, another wipe later because mechanics are hard. As you can see, this is Ozma. A fight that is very interesting. And some of the mechanics are a little bit weird to figure out at first, but once, once they're figured out, they're actually extremely easy to follow. This is a very, very scripted fight. And it saddens me that a ton of people fail this. Constantly. It is not helped by the fact, however, that because of how the mechanics work, it is very easy for a single person to fuck up mechanics and end up fucking up, and fucking over, I guess I should say, the entire raid in the process. It can and does happen. Yeah, no, heal yourself and get out of that path. Get out of the path, let me take it. Thank you. So yes, we need to detonate those orbs. Bad stuff will happen if we don't, but they do a crap load of damage. So if you can see their reflection on the inside here, it might look a bit familiar to you as the floating city of Nim. So this is ended up what ended up happening to it because, well, Ozma is a super weapon. Yeah. Uh, somehow, I don't know. Maybe once we actually defeat this thing, we might. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the uh, the Tonberries in the Wandering Palace, Wanderers Palace, might actually be a little bit pleased to find we have dispatched said super weapon. So unlike in Cranside Crystal Tower, where you usually need four people to step on the pads, here you only need one person to step on it, which is rather nice. So Osma Shade, which I, I don't know if this is just, I don't, I, I don't get an explanation for this. I don't know if this is Osma's like actual brain or anything like that. I don't know. It's pretty much just a mini Osma that barely does anything. Now Assimilation, is an interesting gaze attack because it actually has stacks to it and it defaults to one and if you actually keep facing him, her, it, shim, super weapon, uh, it will continue to stack up to three until you are jailed. Now you also have a meteor that's coming down from the sky and will eventually drop on our heads. We need to escape from this abyss, I guess. I'm not sure how we get sucked in or out. Or how Ozma can drop a meteor on us from the inside. Whatever, don't question anything. Or maybe it's like an alternate dimension or whatever we've been transported to. I have no idea. I'm just making stuff up. But it, you will get a message about the doomsday impact and shit I am lagging. Coming up. Or maybe not. Maybe I missed it because of the lag. But anyway, once you're outside, you can safely ignore that. So guys, guys, spread out a little bit. Well, I guess radio dragons, but... 
These bleed sacks that are gonna start dropping on people can be pretty nasty. There we go. See, there's the Doomsday Impact messages, even though they're um, a, a bit late, but I'm blaming that on the intense lag I just got. Now, thankfully, that didn't happen, but if two of those meters actually blow up too close to one another, they will debuff the entire raid, and it sucks. Just a wee bit. Okay, I think it's safe to restart DPS again. See, this one is going so much better than the other one. Get me. Thank you. Oh, almost fell off there. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. We're cool. Everything's fine. I've never actually been knocked off the edge by Holy. Uh, you can be, but I have come rather close a few times. Usually from unintentionally tunneling visioning. But we got this. We'll be fine. Totally fine. Uh oh, I need to repair my gear. Probably not helped by the multiple amount of wipes in here. There we go. Super weapon defeated. Bye, Ozma. Now, if you actually do return to the start and walk past where we saw the, the pyramid from a distance before, you will notice that Ozma is no longer there. Now, that's actually how I initially found out that Ozma was visible from there in the first place. And again, I, I really appreciate that kind of level of detail because they certainly didn't have to do something like that. Like, who was going to be looking for him, you know? Nice toenails. Oh, she's covered in glitter and sparklies! Nice boobs. Yeah, lady, I think you might need a little bit of a haircut. So this is Calophisteri, and for a long time I didn't actually recognize her as a boss from Final Fantasy V until it was directly pointed out to me, and I think it's because she's one of the bosses in the in the in the rift or the void or whatever the hell you want to call it, where where there's just boss rushes everywhere. I'm I'm pretty sure that's why, because if you remember her, she is very pretty much almost instantaneously recognizable, right down to the colors and what's really interesting about her for a final boss is like Ozma she is entirely all mechanics but they are quite more forgiving because unless it's pretty much the main tank or occasionally other people being stupid one person messing up actually will not harm the raid as a whole, in general. In general, there are ways. That and she hits like a fucking wet noodle. There are things in this fight that give vulnerability stacks, and the tank, the main tank can actually sit on five of them and still be fine. Like, she does that little damage. It's all in the mechanics, some of which hit he very heavy and very hard. So as long as you have like say like one healer and like a tank alive, like or even like a warrior who can who can self heal and or actually paladins too, I guess. I guess all the tanks have a bit of a self heals because there are unavoidable AOE's in here that the DPS will eventually succumb to. But you can literally beat this fight on two people. It will take you forever, but it is very actually possible. And there have been times where people have stood in mechanics like a bunch of schmucks 
and only a few people have carried the teams to victory. Seen it happen multiple times, I have been among them. So where people often fail is not noticing that she's got this giant spear for her hair, and that is what determines which side of the arena she does her little giant haircut move on. As well as those traps she lays on the floor, which are entirely avoidable. They only actually grow into the entanglements when somebody actually stands in them. Or actually gets close enough to them to be sucked in, because there is a bit of a, a vacuum radius to it. Game, did you just- Game, you just ate my swift cast. Sort of. Kind of. So of course this is your DPS check for the fight right here, is just those silly little things. That's how they incorporated the orb that she has in, in 5 to the fight. And that is the only time where it actually takes place, because I guess they had to have a DPS check somewhere in there. But I guess it's kind of good where she's not like Cloud of Darkness, where she just spams that stage over and over again. It only happens once. She, she, acts more, she acts much more like a primal in that regard. So, remember guys, always hug your axes. Not X's. Although you can hug your heck X's if you want. That's totally cool. Stay away from the band hammer. No, 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 you're, no, you're not gonna penetrate me. Oh god, I am really lagging. Holy shit. So they want to go to the other side of her. Now, this move death charge over here can be a little tricky to deal with. The easiest way to deal with it is dodge from behind. Don't dodge from the side. And, f oh my god, thankfully this tank knows what he's doing. The v easiest thing to do for the tanks is don't follow her for that. Leave her alone and let her come back to you. Because if you start tanking her against the wall and she starts slipping up her, 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 her spear head thingy, hair, whatever the hell you want to call it, you might actually uh, put that thing to 90% to 100% of the arena, which is not cool. That is pretty much how you wipe the damn raid. And I am getting some severe packet loss here, guys. Holy hell, I apologize. Not really much I can do about it, but but just kind of go with the flow and just... Just go with it. Hug your X's, guys. That time I did say X's. That was quite intentional. So yeah, this is the only what, a part of the fight where I would actually classify as hard. Is the, all the, the, the crap on the floor, plus the immediate haircut that happens after that. If you're not paying attention, you can very easily get clipped by it. And I honestly, it's one of the few places I don't actually blame people for uh, getting fucked over. Because I would be remiss if I didn't have that happen to me every once in a while. Alright, I don't have this cast. Dodge from behind and you'll be good. You can very clearly see where her hair is going. And that way you're not getting turned around by the fact that she's turned around and forget which side it's on. Hooray! And she did! Sorry, lady. 
Well, considering this is the tomb of the Null Stone, do we now have the Null Stone? Is that what's inside that? We're gonna go ahead and put those gloves on. And then we gotta glamour them. No, I don't have any more glamour prisms. Oh, we're gonna have to fix that. I must have run out. Oh, I need to repair my gear anyway, so so we'll handle that. We'll, we'll just look ugly for a couple minutes. Actually, these gloves aren't bad. These gloves aren't bad. Should we keep them on? I don't know. Let's get a look at them in better light. You know what? We, we can keep them on for a little bit. Just a little bit. So, uh, where's the null stone? Is it here? Hi, guys. Well, we kind of found a couple of them that were turned into zombies, but... What? Didn't I kick your ass too? Well, that would explain why we wouldn't find we couldn't find her. No, well, actually, we're not here for her. We, we just want the Null Stone. Sorry, nothing personal. Why don't we just take the Null Stone and just rip him to shreds right now? Uh, I don't think pointing a gun at a void set is a good idea. Yeah, sorry, she's not a friend. She's not a very good bargaining chip for us. So we're just gonna take this thing and we're gonna just scarf a lot of here. Okay, thanks. Bye. Well, too bad. Nope. 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 You wanted this compass so bad. You wanted to come here. You know, you kind of dealt their own hand in this. Sorry. Well, poo on you too. Sorry. Hey, I did not advance that line of dialogue. I did not tell you it was okay yet. 
Obliterate him. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. You fucked with the wrong kitty cat. Did it, did it work? Well, it didn't kill him, but at least it got him to go away. Okay, let's get the hell out of here now. Yeah, I just said that. Let's go. Let's go. Uh-oh, what's that little bat? I'm not sure I like the looks of that. Not sure I like the looks of that. 